So we'll turn our attention here to trauma to the proximal GU system. Uh, we're going to talk about trauma to the kidneys and to the ureters. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about the bladder and the urethra as part of the distal GU system, and then the genitals are kind of their own thing. So renal injury, this is the most common urologic trauma. And kidneys are in a very precarious situation. They sit in the retroperitoneum, uh, suspended by a couple ligaments, uh, but mostly their hyla, which include the arteries that feed them, and a little bit of perirenal fat. So there's really not a whole lot uh, supporting the kidneys. They're kind of just hanging there. And so because of that, they're very susceptible to blunt trauma. Another thing that makes the kidneys very uh, susceptible to injury is the fact that they are uh, in a very exposed space in the back. And particularly when we think about children, uh, they, uh, their kidneys are even larger relative to the size of their body. So uh, renal injury, there's many reasons why it's, uh, why it's so common. But most of all, it's because the kidneys are uh, not very well supported. Fracture of the lower ribs is another thing that can cause renal injury. It's very common. Uh, if you get a fracture of the lower ribs, that can move down and lacerate uh, the renal uh, parenchyma or the, the renal capsule. So uh, this is another way that you can get injury. And indeed, if you have a patient who has a chest x-ray, trauma patient with a chest x-ray, uh, that it shows fracture of the lower ribs, you should, uh, that should raise your suspicion for a possible renal injury. Uh, patients who have pre-existing renal anomalies, so patients with polycystic kidney disease, either benign or malignant tumors, hydronephrosis, they're at increased risk uh, for renal injury as well. There's really no specific markers for renal injury. It's going to be just based on a combination of the symptoms that the patient has and imaging uh, both your chest x-ray and uh, also uh, a CT if you go on to get it. Um, now this is in contrast to, for instance, the urethra where there is a specific marker, blood at the meatus. Blood at the meatus is urethral injury until proven otherwise, uh, or uh, injury to the bladder, uh, where you'll 98% uh, of the time have gross hematuria, uh, or injury to the ureter, where you would have a flank mass uh, that ultimately will develop in an infection. So really with renal injury, there's no specific signs. Uh, it's really going to vary based on how severe the renal injury is. Some of the symptoms that can be present, however, in a renal injury, again, nonspecific, but they include flank pain, nausea and vomiting, flank ecchymosis, uh, low, lower rib fracture that can cause the renal injury, and lumbar vertebral fracture. I also want you to note that because of some of the renal injuries uh, can be quite severe and cause real severe bleeding, actually... Shock can be a presentation of renal injury as well. If you have significant enough injury to the renal vasculature, uh, you can exsanguinate into the retroperitoneum. So that can be a uh, presenting uh, feature as well. As far as making a diagnosis, the best test to get if you want to assess, look at the kidneys and see if there's any uh, traumatic damage, any lacerations, any hematomas, is a helical CT with IV contrast. So, uh, sorry, uh, renal injuries are graded uh, one through five based on their severity. Don't memorize this for the USMLE, but know that there is a, a spectrum of, uh, of severity as far as renal trauma, renal injuries. So they're graded one through five one being the least severe. So grade one is a contusion uh, or a subcapsular hematoma. Remember that the kidney is inside of a capsule and the subcapsular hematoma would just be a hematoma that's between the capsule and the parenchyma. It doesn't go into the tissue. A grade two renal injury would be a perirenal hematoma. So it extends into the parenchyma. Uh, it usually includes a cortical laceration that's less than one centimeter.
A grade 3 renal injury is a cortical laceration that's more than 1 centimeter. A grade 4 renal injury is a cortical laceration that's deep enough to penetrate the cortic uh, cortical medullary junction. Uh, or it can be thrombosis of a renal segmental artery, and that will cause ischemia of its supplying portion of the kidney. And then a grade 5 renal injury, uh, these are the most severe. This is uh, either thrombosis of the main renal artery, multiple major lacerations, severe lacerations, which we call a shattered kidney because it looks like shattered glass, uh, or disruption of the renal hilum. And that's these bottom two, the multiple major lacerations and the disruption of the renal hilum, these can be deadly because they can cause significant enough bleeding to cause shock. So here's a picture of these grades. So you see your subcapsular hematoma here, your less than one centimeter laceration here, greater than one centimeter laceration for grade three. Grade four is your lacerations that extend past the cortical medullary junction. And grade five is disruption of the hyla, um, or uh, it can be um, multiple it can be the, well, I guess they don't show it here, but multiple major lacerations, etc. So they only show the disruption of the hyla here. But there are different ways grade 5 can be. Again, don't memorize that. Just know that there is a, a spectrum of renal injury. And most renal injuries do fall on the grade 1, grade 2 uh, side of the spectrum. 97% of renal injuries can be managed non-operatively with observation and follow-up. So 85% uh, of renal injuries, renal trauma, are just simply renal contusions. Another 12% are minor renal, renal lacerations. So that makes up 97% right there. So only less than 3% are going to require some kind of invasive uh, therapy or surgery. Uh, so patients with major renal lacerations who are hemodynamically stable can go on to get treatment with arteriography and then selective embolization to stop any uh, remaining bleeding that's there. Uh, however, if arteriography is not available, if you don't have this at your hospital, then you may uh, go on to just open surgery. Patients who have significant renal injury who are hemodynamically unstable, of course, are going to need surgery, and you'll want to try to stabilize them as best you can, but that's going to be difficult to do. Uh, patients who have penetrating trauma, usually they're going to need surgery. So the complications of renal injury include the development of an AV fistula, and this is primarily when there's injury to larger vessels, and then renal artery stenosis can be another complication, and that can lead to renal vascular hypertension. And how would you treat that? ACE inhibitor. Ureteral injuries. These are the least common urogenital injury. Usually they're caused by penetrating trauma. That's the best way to get, get at the ureters. Otherwise, the ureters are pretty secure. Um, they're, it's usually the kidney that's going to be damaged, not the ureter. Now, in pediatric patients, ureteral trauma is a little bit easier uh, just because of their body size, and they have a, a hyperextensible vertebral column, and so it's a little bit easier to get at the ureters in, uh, in, in children. Uh, but uh, for the most part, ureteral injuries are very uncommon. Uh, if, if they do happen, it's usually the proximal one-third of the ureter. The symptoms are not specific, and as a matter of fact, a lot of times this is not diagnosed until a little bit later when there are a little bit more specific symptoms. So the symptoms early on would be colicky abdominal pain, possibly a flank mass, uh, and possibly hematuria. Uh, but that's not necessary. They may not have any symptoms. Uh, usually the way this winds up getting diagnosed is by a uh, is delayed uh, with a flank mass and an infection. And so if you think of what uh, the kidney does and what the ureters do, the ureters transport uh, urine from the kidney to the bladder. 
And so if the ureter is, uh, is disrupted, there's not going to be any way to get uh, urine from that kidney uh, into the bladder, but even more importantly, uh, that urine is going to uh, extravasate into the retroperitoneum. And because of that, you're going to get this mass, and it's made of urine. And so we call it a urinoma. And there'll probably also be some blood in there as well, because surrounding the ureter are small vessels, and so you'll get a little blood probably too. Uh, so this ultimately can get infected and does get infected. And so in addition to this flank mass, you'll have fever and abdominal pain and also pyuria on labs. And if you suspect a ureteral injury, the best test is going to be the same as if you suspect a kidney injury. It's a helical CT with IV contrast. And as far as treating this, there are various ways you can do it with stents and uh, open surgery. It doesn't matter. As far as the USMLE is concerned, that's way outside the scope. You're just going to be responsible for getting a urology consult and passing the buck off to them. Uh, I also want to bring up one more thing. Uh, you may wonder why the kidney, the, uh, it's such an important organ, why don't we have to manage this operatively in so many cases? Why can we just let this be? The reason is the kidney is a very, very vascular organ. It gets lots of, uh, it gets lots of uh, arterial supply. And because of that, it's very easy uh, for your kidney, just like your mouth, to heal because there's lots of, of vascular supply and clotting can happen very quickly. Um, so uh, the kidney is, is very, uh, can rebound very well uh, when there's trauma. And so because of that, we oftentimes don't have to operate. And we're going to see that that stands in contrast to some other organs in the GU system. So if you have any questions, let me know.